When war ravages a city, the visible horrors represent only part of the total damage. Every element of a city and people's lives is so interconnected that each consequence leads to another. For example, weapons may damage and destroy hospitals, businesses, homes and the power grid, plunging buildings into darkness and rendering water and wastewater facilities powerless. Many people, including doctors, nurses, engineers, teachers, traders and administrative authorities flee, leaving everything behind as they search for safety. With the loss of skilled workers, essential services are further weakened. Telecommunications and financial services stop functioning. Blockades and insecurity lead to supply chains breaking down. Markets and store shelves lie empty. Infrastructure remains unrepaired, and survival is even harder for those who don't flee and stay in the city. Fighting and unexploded munitions pose a constant threat. Food and medicine shortages, joblessness and economic collapse create a chain reaction where people cannot find or afford water, food and healthcare just when they need it most. Their homes are gone, their health declines as hygiene becomes impossible to maintain. Desperate, people take greater risks to meet their essential needs. Family ties are fractured, the dead are left unattended. As school close, children growing up in a war zone face a bleak future. Each instance of civilian harm leads to multiple cascading effects, or second and third order effects, with complex interdependencies between them. They accumulate and reinforce each other to create long-lasting harm. This doesn't happen on the first, second or third day, but over time, a spiral of harm affects people's safety, food and economic security, physical and mental health, and ultimately exceeds the capacity to cope. And this cycle of harm can trap communities for generations. To break the spiral, governments and armed actors must prioritize the protection of civilians in all urban military operations in their doctrine, training and planning for urban operations. And this protection of civilians must be reflected in their conduct. This obligation is clear under international humanitarian law.